It's here over two years since the release of the original Ronin 4D with its 6K camera. DJI finally delivered on that promise and released the 8K version of the X9 Zenmuse camera module for their unique gimbal camera. We took a first look. Cinity, your digital cinema tech resource, supported by B&H and CVP. There are a few things in the tech and camera world that arrived much later than announced and at a much higher price. Remember RED's original announcement of 3K for 3K from 2008, that is a 3K camera for $3,000? Never came for that price, only years later for around $10,000. Well, or the Tesla Cybertruck, delayed several times over years since its announcement, it recently started shipping at a 50% higher price and less range than initially promised. In 2021, DJI announced the Ronin 4D, initially with a 6K camera unit, the X9 6K. I reviewed it when it came out and was absolutely amazed by the amount of innovation that DJI packed into this unique new camera. While the 6K version started shipping shortly after the announcement, at the same time they announced an 8K version of their camera module, the X9 8K, which would be shipping soon. Well, over two years have passed and of course people online have started making jokes that it will never appear. But except for the delay, DJI now actually delivered and opposed to the products that I mentioned, DJI are exceeding our expectations and keeping the price as promised. Here is the Ronin 4D 8K version, featuring the X9 8K camera unit that can also be purchased separately for previous owners of the Ronin 4D 6K. Now let's take a look at the most obvious differences between the 8K and the 6K version of the X9. The new Ronin 4D 8K can shoot full frame 8K at up to 60 frames per second, uncropped, and 4K with a full sensor readout at up to 120 frames per second. It's really rare to hear about an 8K sensor to be able to go this high with frame rates and it opens up a lot of possibilities for cropping in post. The Ronin 4D is perfect for filming fast-paced sports scenes, but of course the gimbal unit makes it really hard to put long telephoto lenses on this setup. The longest you can usually go with a prime that will fit here is around 85mm, like in this case, but that's not very long for sports shooting. But let's say you shoot at 8K and only finish in HD, you'll be able to crop in up to four times. Not bad at all. And of course, shooting high speed in 4K using the full sensor at 120 frames per second is also more than welcome. It's something that Sony shooters using an FX3, FX6 or an A7S3 have become used to over the last few years with a slight crop. But it's great to hear that DJI Ronin 4D users will now have this ability with a full sensor readout. But let's move on to dynamic range. For the Ronin 4D 6K, we performed an extensive lab test for dynamic range, rolling shutter and exposure latitude. And you can read it here in case you missed it, we'll also put the link in the description below this video. The results for the 6K camera were already quite impressive. But now we also ran a preliminary test of the new X9 8K camera, and I say preliminary because we don't have a production firmware yet. And we didn't do all of the tests yet, but of course we wanted to find out how it stacks up against the 6K version of the X9. Now let me highlight first that the dual native ISOs of the X9 8K are ISO 320 and 1600 and this only changes when you enable something called dynamic range expansion mode. This mode is only available for frame rates of up to 30 frames per second and it switches the signal processing in the Ronin 4D 8K from 12 to 14 bit. The dual native ISO then changes to 800 and 4000 ISO, which is more similar to the native ISOs of the 6K camera, which is 800 and 5000 ISO. It's important to point out that a 14-bit sensor still seems to be quite a rarity in the camera world in general. There is only the Fujifilm X-H2S that offers 14-bit color depth in a consumer camera, which we have also performed a lab test for. Now I really wonder why the dynamic range expansion mode is something you need to enable specifically for frame rates below 30 frames per second because I don't see any reason not to use it. So I think this should be on by default and switch off when you go higher with the frame rates, but that's just my two cents. 
To say the least, the results of our preliminary lab test for the X98K Senmuse camera gimbal are impressive. In general, switching on dynamic range expansion mode will result in up to a full additional stop of dynamic range, depending on the mode. For example, at ISO 800, we measured 13.8 stops of dynamic range at a signal to noise ratio of 1 and still 12.7 stops at a signal to noise ratio of 2. When switching from 8K to 4K with a full sensor readout, the results became even better. At ISO 800 in 4K, we got 14.2 stops at SNR1 and 13.1 stops at SNR2. We will run these tests again on a production firmware once it's out, but if confirmed, this will put the Ronin 4D 8K in its 4K mode almost on par with an Alexa Mini LF, one of the top performing cameras we ever tested. Please sincerely excuse the lack of footage from this first look at the Ronin 4D 8K, but I currently have COVID, which doesn't make things easier when you can't get close to anybody else, combined with rainy, dark winter weather and very, very short days here in Vienna. But I will use the Ronin 4D 8K more extensively and share more thoughts at a later point. Stay tuned. Now DJI is selling a Ronin 4D 8K combo with their quite impressive 17 to 28 T3 lens, a Pro SSD 1 terabyte and a Pro SSD mount, and much more for just below 13,000 US dollars. But if you're already a Ronin 4D 6K owner, you can purchase the Senmuse X9 8K gimbal camera separately for around $3,600, which is a very fair price for the incredible sense of performance you are getting here. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks.